Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to finish our bodice draft by doing the back. And the back is a lot like the front, although easier, so it should be a little bit quicker to do. Not quite as many steps. And a lot of the same techniques that we used before. Now what I'm going to do, uh, and what I would like you to do is, even though we're doing these separately, please make them in the same file. So after you're done with your front sloper, you're going to continue on in the same file with your back sloper. Okay? So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this guy to the side because we're done with this. And I'm also going to just protect him. You can right click, go to attributes to protect. Um, it's a little bit of an unnecessary step, but um, you know, just for sake of making sure we don't alter it in any, any way. So we are going to start again with the uh, full length and full width of the back. So we're gonna start with a new piece create a rectangular piece and we can label it even though we may have to label it again um, if you remember what happened on the front when we joined those pieces although there'll be less sort of building out from the box and more cutting away in the back piece so let's check our measurement chart and find out what our full length for the back is going to be now our full length for the back is 17 and 1 eighth uh, inch and we don't have a bust arc for the back but we do have a back arc so the back arc is 8 and uh, 3 eighths and we're going to go ahead and add 3 quarters inch to that so back arc, 3 eighths inch, plus another 6 eighths, which is 3 fourths, equals 8 and 9 eighths. That's reduced down to 9 and 1 eighth. So that is our full width for the back. So let's type in. I already forgot it. <laughs> Full length for the back, 17 and 1 eighth. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, and just as before, we're going to rotate it up. And let's move it into place. And so we're going to work kind of in reverse. Um, whereas this is going to be the center back, this is going to be the waist, this is going to be the side seam and armhole, and this is going to be the neck and shoulder. Okay? So we're going to do the same measurements as we did on the front. We want to find the center back length. Um, it's less of a drop than it is on the front. Um, it's just a little bit of a curve up, so let's find out what it is. Full length, there we got the full length, we want, to, we want the center length, back is 16 and a half inches, okay? So that's 16 up from the waist, 16 and a half, and let's place our point there. And in this instance, it's going to be our previous point, and we want it to be a grading point. Okay, now we can drag down our guideline there, and we want to now find the across shoulder for the back. 
Now, the actually the across shoulder uh, should be the same on the front and the back. Across shoulder. Oh, my bad. It's not. And there's two different measurements. Um, so that is the back, 17 and, uh, or sorry, 7 and 7 eighths. from our previous point. And it's grading, good. And that was seven and seven eighths, I'm remembering, sorry, I'm getting a little fuzzy headed with all these measurements. Okay, good, we're working. And again, let's drag out a guideline and plop it down right there. And we've already finished the first section. Excellent. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and do the shoulder slope the same way we did the shoulder slope in the front. So it's going to come from here and it's going to intersect on this line here. So let's find the back um, shoulder slope and we want to add an eighth of an inch to that. Shoulder slope back, 16 and 5 eighths, plus a, another eighth of an inch is 16 and 6 eighths, or 3 fourths. So I'm going to grab my draft tool, start here at the center back waist, bring it up, intersect here, oops, I forgot to hit the Alt key. To pop up my measurement box. And we're going to work from our last point. Ooh, pretty close. Now it's a little bit off that line, so again, let's mess with our measurement. Actually, a 62 degrees solid looks pretty good. It looks like it's on there. So I'm going to hit OK and right click, finish drafting. And yeah, it looks like it's right on that line there, so we're working good there with our uh, back shoulder slope. And what I would like to do now is find the back neck and we're going to put it up here to sort of help work out our back neck. And we're going to add an eighth of an inch to that measurement. So let's find the back neck. Back neck is two and seven eighths. And we're adding an eighth of an inch to that. So that gives us a nice even three inches. from our sort of center point here, which of course is our previous point. Make a grading and okay. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and put in the shoulder length and we're gonna add about a half an inch to it. Add a half an inch to it before. Now we subtracted. Hold on. I just want to double check. I didn't miss it. Adding a half an inch. No. Ah, sorry. We're gonna add a half an inch. Sorry, I was a little confused because as this and this should be the same, uh, this length should be the same as our shoulder uh, uh, length for the back, um, but we are adding a dart in it, so that's why it's going to be a little bit longer. So, 
Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to take that shoulder slope, and again, we can take the measurement, or I can just take the measurement here, because again, it should be the same from front to back, um, and we're going to add a half an inch to that. So that is going to be 5.69. And again, if you don't want to measure, we can go here and just look for the shoulder length. Okay? Add about a half an inch to that. Well, not about, exactly. Now what I want to do is I want this line that I'm going to make to come from through here and through that point right there. And it might extend out a little bit. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to zoom in so I know I'm working correctly because I'm going to use the points visually to make sure that my line is going in the right direction. So I'm going to click here and I want to make sure this line is going through that point number two. And let's extend it out. Hold down the Alt key. And I, again, I want to make sure that this is going to be 5.69. So we're going to go in a little bit. OK. Right click, finish drafting. There we are. There's going to be our shoulder seam. Okay. Now what we're going to do is um, basically uh, find out where our first dart placement is. Sorry. So let's go down here. Remember the dart sits on our waist and it is the same the front and back. If you remember from the skirt, it's that three and one eighths inch. So I'm just going to place a point right here, three and eight, one eighth inch in from that corner. And that of course was our next point. Let's make it grading. Okay. Now what I want to do is um, find out where my waist is going to end. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this little bit of math part um, uh, like we did on the front. So what I want to do is I want to find the full waist arc for the back, which is right here. So that's six and three eighths. Now to that, I want to add a quarter inch ease. And I'm going to add the dart intake of one and a half inches. So this is going to be a standard dart intake like it was on the skirts and not a varying depending on measurement intake like it was on the front bodice. So one and a half inches. So let's grab our calculator and do this. So we have our uh, waist arc, which was six and three eighths. and three eighths converted into decimal points is 0.375. Uh, we're gonna add a quarter inch of ease, and we're gonna add an inch and a half for dart intake. And that gives us um, eight and one eighth. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to measure all the way from here out to here with that 8 and 1 eighth. But what's going to give us an issue? Well, this point right here. So maybe I should have done the other step first. But it's no matter because all I need to do is right click on this point, go to attributes, and turn off the grading. And I'll probably turn it back on once we're done with this measurement. Because remember, 
Um, we take measurements from the closest grading points, and if there is a grading point in between where you want to take a measurement and the point you want to make, you have to make sure that you've turned the grading um, properties off, at least temporarily. All right, I'm measuring from my next point. And I got pretty close. I'm going to make this grading. Okay. And let's go and turn this one <clears throat> back on. All right, now we also can make our dart intake right here. So we're going to go ahead and um, place another point that is an inch and a half away from this point. Okay, so there's our dart points. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we have our shoulder length. So just to review, since we are about done with section number two already, we have our dart points, we have our shoulder, and we kind of have what we need for the neckline as well. Now the last step I kind of want to do is just to square a guideline down from up here. And to get that nice little um, square, I'm going to do the same technique as I did before, so it seems to have worked. Just, just to give me a little guideline shape, a little square from which I can use to line up my lines. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to rotate this little guy so he matches up with my shoulder length line. a little bit down because I don't want to connect the line to this piece. I want it to connect to my original pattern piece up here. And then I'm just going to use that as a guide. And it looks like I could have done a slightly better job, so I'm just going to grab my move point tool and adjust. Letting me move you. Well, that might have to be good enough. No, maybe not. There we go. Perfect. Perfect square. Okay. So let's move on. is I'm going to um, shape out the, <clears throat> sorry, uh, the waist a little bit. And I'm going to start by uh, dropping down this point right here. So let's zoom in. And I want to square it down 3 sixteenths of an inch. It's 
going to be all located here. It's going to be a negative value. This should be 90 degrees. I'm not sure why it's not. Actually, let's blend it in. Do I want to blend it in already? Yeah, let's blend it in. Actually, no, I don't want to blend it in quite yet. So let's finish drafting. Just trying to figure out um, what's going to be the easiest in OptiText. Okay, so um, here we are. So we have this dropped a little bit. Now let's do our side length. So first we have to find out what the side length is, and it should be the same as the front, but let's double check. Eight and uh, one quarter. And what we would like to do is, let me zoom out a little bit. I want to make this point come from that bottom point we just made and a line here. So maybe a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to zoom in because that drop down point we made is so small. But it should sit somewhere around here. Can I see that little point? Okay, good. There it is. So I'm going to start here and we're going to go up and sit on this line. Hold the Alt key and click. Now I'm going to work from last point and again I want the total distance to be that inch and a quarter and I want to make sure that X is sitting on the line. So it's a little off. So let's wiggle it about. There we go. It's sitting right on that line. Yes. And right click finish drafting. Woo. Okay. So in this instance, so this is the point where Optext doesn't like to work from these sorts of points down here. Um, so maybe I should have done the whole thing all in one. But let's try to, okay, so let's do that. Well, I have a point now from which I can work to, so it should be a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is actually delete this little point and do this all in one step. It should be a little bit easier because I've already made the point that I need. Okay, so I'm going to click here first. And we're just going to drop it that 3 16th inch first. Okay. And then we're going to go back up to here. And I don't need to measure again because I already did it. Now it'll let us have our line. Thank you, OptiTex. Okay. So um, now what we're going to do that we have created the uh, side length, um, we're going to go ahead and um, put in the dart length. And our dart length is going to be one inch length less than our side length. So if our side length was seven and, or eight and a quarter, um, our dart length is going to be seven and a quarter. And we're going to do that from a point that is in the middle of these two guys. So let's first make the point from which we're going to measure up. And we can do that easily using our proportion because this is just going to be the midpoint of the dart. 
And now let's draft up. I want it to be measured from the last point. I don't want any deviation right or left. And I want the full thing to be an inch, I'm sorry, seven inches and a quarter. Okay, right click, finish drafting. Now that will give us uh, the ability to draw our uh, dart legs and we're gonna go ahead and draw them so they are one eighth inch below here. So we're gonna do a little bit more fiddly work down here, shaping the waist. So what I'm gonna do is click here, hold down the Alt key, make sure we're going down at one eighth inch, no deviation, so this should be negative 90. I don't know why it's getting all wiggly. So if it rounds up, uh, your 1.25 to 1.3, that's fine. Or 0.13, that's fine. Now, um, to avoid the troubles we had before, I'm going to go and go all the way up to the dark tip. I hope I didn't click. Okay, good. And finish drafting. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. I think it made it. I'm not quite sure why. Why? Okay, I'm a little confused about why it keeps asking me to finish digitizing right there. Try it again. Okay, um, what I think is happening is it's trying to snap to the original point. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer. I wish Optitex wasn't so zoom dependent. I guess we do have to zoom in quite a bit and then zoom out, which makes everything more difficult, but. And then we'll just bring it right up here and then we can right click finish drafting. Okay, so there is our dart. And what we want to do now is to start to build out um, our little bottom waist here. So let's zoom in and take a look at what we're going to do. So what we want to do is we want to incorporate these little dart drops in our pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'm going to hope that it lets me draft even though I'm connecting bottom points or stray points. Oh, I know what I should have done. I should start here. If this doesn't work, you can start here. I bet it's not going to work, so I'm just going to do that. Oh, yes. Aha! It actually made me do it. Let me do it. Okay, and we're going to attach this whole thing um, to our piece. Oh, you know what I did? It created... Okay, hold on. We should have done it the other way because it didn't create a line. It created a whole new piece, which I'm not exactly sure why it did that. 
So I'm going to just start generally somewhere over here. It doesn't matter too much. Leave enough so you get a nice square corner here. Maybe a little bit in here. Sure. And then we're just going to work this way instead. To try to appease OptiTexas temperamental mentality. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get all these little tiny sections. Okay. Don't, don't make me do this individually. Mm. Okay, OptiText, don't, I told you, don't make me do this individually. So what I'm gonna try to do, um, so I don't have to do each one of these little pieces individually, is to lead away some of these lines It's okay because I can still go back and re, uh, replace my dart there. I still have the points, even though I, there we go. Um, actually, no, I need this point. I don't need this point. And this should allow me to create this piece a little bit better. I'm just going to go over here to see what's happening over here to make sure that's going to make it easy for us. So this line right here, this is the point I don't need. I don't want, This line I don't want to disconnect. I just want to disconnect this point. Oh, great. Whole piece. All right. Now let's try this again. Hopefully it should be a little bit easier for us now that those excess lines are not in the way. There we go. Perfect. And all I have to do is attach it. Let's attach it up here. Green line going where I want it to, and there we are. Okay, so um, let's zoom out and make sure that our guidelines are still where they should be. This is looking fine. This might need a little bit of an adjustment. There we go. And um, now what we're going to do is uh, we're almost ready to really kind of finalize it, but we want to put in one more uh, or a few more measurements. Um, uh, one, again, it's going to be the across chest measurement for the back. Um, so what it is is the across back, um, not the across chest, because of course the chest is in the front. And uh, da, 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 da. we also want to uh, put in the measurements for our uh, shoulder dart. So let's go ahead and we'll first work on the shoulder dart, um, which is quite easy to make it a little easier. We're going to zoom in. And what I would like to do, let's first, let's get rid of you. Let's move you out to the side so we can get a nice clean workspace. Um, in the middle of this line is going to be our point P, where the middle of the shoulder dart is going to be. So what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to make this a non-grading point. If I can, I'm not quite sure why it's not letting me, but fine. It's not really connected, so it should be okay. We might have to cut this first. Let's see. Yep. Okay. So what we're going to have to do first is we're going to have to cut out the shoulder. So I'm going to use my cut piece tool. I'm going to cut along here 
from high point shoulder to low point shoulder and then just straight out to the contour. We can delete this piece and now what we can do is now we can place a point in between here. And again, I don't think this is going to be in the way, but of course we'll double check with our measurements. If it is, you can just turn the grading off. Now I'm going to double check. Looks good, it's in the middle there. Now what we want to do is we want to square down from this inch, uh, uh, sorry, from this point, a three inch line into the, uh, to the direction of point O. So what I'm gonna do is, see this is point O, this is the dart tip here and if you would like, you can go ahead and put the dart legs back, but we'll actually probably do that later when we put in the dart with the dart tool. But what I'm interested in is, I'm gonna first make a guideline here, okay, just to connect those points, because that is going to um, tell me how uh, in what direction my shoulder dart is going to go because we want it to point toward that area. Now let's zoom in and put in the dart length. And actually, we can hold off on that because when we put in the dart, we can just um, use the dart tool and set the length. So I'm going to skip over that until we do all the sort of finishing touches at the end. Um, now what I want to do is I do want to uh, figure out what the dart width is going to be up here. So I'm going to zoom in real close and the dart on the shoulder is very, very small. It's only half an inch. So we're going to measure a quarter inch out from the midpoint for the width. But what we're also going to do is we're going to kick it up um, a, a eighth inch from the shoulder seam. So first I'm going to put in those widths. Remember it was just a quarter of an inch on either side of this point, this midpoint part. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my drafting tool and I'm going to draft up an eighth of an inch. Now in this case, I want to just double check from segment. And this is gonna allow me to square it upright. So I am measuring from this segment. So this is, we rarely use the other uh, measurement box options, but I'm going to set this to zero and do the distance from here. This is an eighth of an inch, oops. So again, I'm looking for the angle from this segment. I want it to be squared up, and in this case, it's going to be a zero degrees. Next, I'm gonna blend it back in. So I wanna sort of keep this a little bit square here, so I'm gonna go a little bit short of that point, and then right-click Finish Drafting. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here from segment, keep it zero or I guess negative zero, doesn't really matter. Okay, and then blend it in. And uh, in this case, I can, I can go all the way to the end of my shoulder point right here. So I can just click it in right here. Right click, finish drafting. Now you guessed it, we gotta build out these pieces. So let's do it. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Um, since we have a lot of guidelines in the way, 
I'm just going to toggle the guidelines off for a second. And then we'll put them back in. Now let's join them. I wanted to move the pieces and not not the There we go. Now let's join them back up. I'm just going to move this guy again. Okay, now we have shaped that nice shoulder and what I can do is just to get rid of that little notch, delete our original points right here. So again, delete that, and we're gonna delete that. And what I'm gonna do is, since I, I still want this line here for when we create the dart, I'm gonna use my move point tool and just pick them up and drop them down so we don't have that little indent. Um, don't worry if the, the whole line doesn't connect, that's okay. Actually, since it didn't, I can just delete it. Okay, so believe it or not, we are almost done. We have both of our darts set. Um, and what we're gonna do next is of course that across back that I was talking about. Now, um, the across back is measured at the sort of shoulder blade level, which is um, one fourth down from the center back neck. So this point right here. I'm gonna put in my um, guidelines again. I need to be a little bit adjusted. So let's adjust them back. Boop. I guess this was here. No, it doesn't matter. This one we're actually kind of done with, so it doesn't really matter where it is now. Okay, so um, again, this is going to be a great function for our proportionate measure mocks. So I'm going to add a point, and again, I want it one-fourth of the distance from here to here, down. So this is my next point. So I want it one-fourth of the total distance away from this point. So this is my next point. I'm going to add, put in 25% here, and that will give me my shoulder blade level. And that is uh, the point at which uh, we can measure across for our across back measurement. Now let's find out what the across back measurement is. Six and seven eighths. And we are adding a quarter inch to that. So we're gonna end up with seven and one eighth inch for our across back. Grab our draft tool, click on the point we just made, bring it out, and from last point is what I want to measure from, and I don't want any difference up or down, so let's put that at zero, and let's put this at seven and one eighth. Right click, finish drafting. Okay. Now what we can do is we are ready to sculpt out our necklines and put in our um, darts, our final darts. So again, home stretch, almost there. Let's do the neck first because the neck, just like the front, is easy peasy. 
and I'm going to go straight to cutting just like I did on the front. I'm going to start here at the high point shoulder and I'm going to go along this line a little ways, not the whole way because I want to kind of curve it through here and match it up here. This is going to be just a little bit of a squared edge and then I want to start curving it by holding down the shift key and blend it down to this corner. Now I'm going to fix that up a little bit. You can cut this out, delete it. And this corner, just like before, I'm going to want to curve it. Whoa. Um, and which is <laughs> going to make it go a little wavy, which I don't want. So I'm going to use my move point tool to just adjust Maybe I'm going to add a little point here just to bring it up a little bit more. And there we go. And I can go ahead and delete these little extraneous lines that I don't need anymore. Ooh, I don't want that. So I'm going to keep that, I guess. Oh, here we go. There's what I don't need. Uh, neckline done. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, do the same for our armhole. So I'm going to zoom in here. And what I want is I want a point that goes from here to here and then curves around here. So I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to um, drag, actually since we're not really going to be using this guideline, I can just move it over to this point now, um, which again is our across back. And remember it's going to do, 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 and then we're going to curve it around here. Now it doesn't tell you to square this, but um, you kind of should. So let's just give a little bit of a squared off line right down here to help guide us. And again, it doesn't say to do this in the directions, but I'm going to recommend it. It doesn't need to be big, just a little bit of a square. into place. No, that's not exactly, but it's close enough. And we'll draft, oh, just a wee guideline. To help us create our armhole seam. And just like before, since this is a little bit more of a complicated curve, I am going to draft it before I cut it. And again, we're going to go out here, the extended point that we made, point number H, if you've been following along with the sheet. I want it to come through this point here. And then I'm going to kind of curve it around here like this. And maybe bring it in here and then all the way to our final point. Okay, so it's looking a little round, but that's okay because remember, I can go ahead and add a point and start to adjust a little bit more with a move point tool. I do want to make sure that they're all curved though, so if you make a point and it's not curved, make sure that you change the properties to curve. Oop, I changed it to grading. I don't want it to be grading. I want it to be curved. Okay, now I'm going to grab my move point tool and just adjust. Just sort of scoot it in there a little bit. Again, it can go past this line, you just don't want it to go past a lot. Zoom in for my fine details. And let's 
let's take a look at that overall. It looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and now that we have it crafted like that, actually I kind of do want to push this out just to round it a little bit more. There we go. Oh, wow. Well. That is it zoom back in. Because it wants to snap to that. I'm just going to push it out just, just slightly, just to make the curve a little nicer. Okay, now let's cut it. And again, I'm going to try to match it up the best I can with the points that I've already done to make sure that I'm ensuring I get what I drew. And we can cut away this piece and delete it. And it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to maybe push this one out a little bit more. There we go. Just get that nice roundness to it. All right, almost done. Now um, we basically have the shape that we want because we built out the shoulder here, we built out the waist here. We got to cut away this. That's the last shaping we do, and uh, then we're just going to add our darts, and we'll be done. And here's easy. We just cut from here to here. Now, if you want, we, a lot of these little tiny points have been left over from the drafting process. And what can happen is they can kind of get in the way and be a little bit messy when you're making measurements. So if you want, oops, um, I would go ahead and just delete some of these extraneous measurements that you don't need, or extraneous points. You needed the measurements. Okay, so we cut that, we cut that. I don't need this guy anymore, so I'm gonna get rid of him. And let's go ahead and finish it off with the darts. So I'm gonna grab the darts, and pretty much all of our measurements are done already. So one, two for the width, and three for the length there on that point we made. And uh, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer to the shoulder dart. And just like before, I'm going to delete the points that we don't need. Boop, boop. And we have our width and we're gonna set the length just so long as it's hitting this line because again we want it to be pointing towards the point of our original dart. Now um, remember when I talked about darts previously that uh, Optitex likes to make darts that are perpendicular to the uh, contour. Now this is a little bit off so what we're going to do is we're going to hold the shift key and we're going to be able to move it slightly so it's pointing along the line that we want it to. Now as soon as we point it, we can come over here to the um, dart depth and change it to what we need it to be, which is three inches. Okay? All right, last steps, fix that grain line. Looks like we don't have to uh, change the name. But I'm gonna anyway, because it has a random two on it and I don't like random numbers. And um, I notice I should probably add a bodice in there. Okay, and one last step to add our size and you know substitute style number, which is just gonna be bodice sloper, okay? And there we are. We are done. I'll take off the protection of this. 
so we can look at them side to side. I'll clear off my guidelines, and there we are. Um, now, similarly, if you want to go ahead, now we did do a lot of deleting of extra little lines and things like that. So if you want to go ahead and delete different things, the shoulder blade line, just like the um, bust line, is a good thing to have. So you can keep that. But if you want to, say, delete this, you can delete that to make it a little cleaner. If you want to delete the middle line here, you can. If you want to delete the uh, shoulder slope, you can as well. Um, so just a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to read. Oops, don't delete the whole thing. And there you are. There is the finished bodice sloper. Um, so I hope uh, it wasn't too difficult. Again, it was a little bit more difficult than the skirt. There's a lot of sort of building out and it doesn't fit quite as nicely into that rectangle shape as um, the skirt did. So again, it was a little bit more wiggly, a little bit more troublesome. Um, but it's good exercise and typically the original drafting of the sloper is a lot easier than a lot of the manipulations that you have to do. So it's just good practice and in, in getting used to the tools and, and the functions of OptiText as well. Um, and of course this is going to be your project just as is size 8. Um, please save it as your name bodice sloper. You guys have been really good at um, labeling your files uh, um, cleanly and with your name, so thank you. Uh, makes it a lot easier for me. Um, and of course, save it as a PDF file, so we're going to save it. And that's it. So next week we'll get into um, what we can do to that bodice to manipulate it, just like we did with the skirt. We're going to follow along the same pattern. Uh, we're going to learn how to manipulate the skirt in sort of basic ways. You're going to have a draft where you follow along with me. Um, and then the subsequent week, week two weeks away, uh, we'll do a little bit more ad of advanced manipulations. And then you'll be on your own to design your own shirt. All right. Bye, guys.